Thank you for visiting this video segment of Dr. Afib. I'm Dr. Morales. In today's video segment, we're going to be talking about digoxin, which is a very commonly used heart medication uh, and what every patient who takes digoxin should know about for their own, for their own health care. Digoxin is an old medication that's been around for a very long time. It was first used in the 1930s, originally isolated from the digitalis plant. And it's been used for decades now for a variety of heart conditions. It's available in both pills as well as in an intravenous uh, form. It's used for a variety of heart conditions. Uh, it's more commonly used for arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation as well as atrial flutter. Uh, but it can also be used for a weak heart, uh, also known as congestive heart failure. So it does have a couple of usages in the heart. When it comes to atrial fibrillation, it's mainly used to, in order to slow the heart rate down. It has several electrical properties on the heart in terms of some of the different channels in your heart to kind of help slow your heart rate down. Uh, and does, but it doesn't really have that much properties to actually prevent episodes of, of atrial fibrillation. Uh, it doesn't really, uh, doesn't really prevent an episode, but it can really help slow your heart rate down when you're having episodes of atrial fibrillation. So what are the main benefits of using a medication like digoxin? Digoxin is a pretty commonly used medication. Uh, it's probably more commonly used in the hospital uh, from, from my setting. Digoxin, one of the great properties about it is that it does not affect blood pressure. Uh, in, actuality, in actuality, it can actually raise blood pressure a little bit when people's blood pressure is too low. A lot of times when people are in the hospital, especially, and they're having a very severe episode of atrial fibrillation, their heart rate may be extremely fast, 130, 140, and their blood pressure, as in turn, is extremely low. And most of the medications that are commonly used for uh, controlling that heart rate will affect that blood pressure, make that blood pressure even worse. But digoxin is one of the few medications that can be used that does not affect blood pressure. And so it's actually very commonly used in the hospital. It can be a very good medication to use in the hospital. In the long term, in the outpatient, it can also be used um, for uh, help controlling AFib heart rates. Um, a lot of times, uh, people may be on more standard uh, medications like beta blockers, but they just aren't able to tolerate higher dosages because their blood pressure is too low and additional medication like digoxin can help, can help control the heart rate. So it does have plenty of uses. I use it plenty of times in my patients. However, uh, there are several adverse risks with this medication and there are several things that need to be closely monitored when it comes to side effects of these medications. Probably one of the most important things to understand if you or your loved one is taking digoxin is how it's cleared. Um, it's cleared by a person's kidneys. And so if someone has abnormal kidney function, the clearance of that drug becomes impaired and you can build up toxic levels of the, of the drug. And this especially happens to people who have abnormal kidney function or if there are sometimes when they're also just being elderly because people when they're elderly they have inherently some abnormal ki kidney function as well. And people who are elderly have abnormal kidney function are more likely to build up these uh, elevated blood levels of the, of the digoxin which is where things like the toxicities can come. Toxicities from digoxin can be start off as very fairly mild symptoms which can include nausea, a confusion, visual changes, uh, but there can be very severe reactions when the digoxin level becomes significantly elevated and which can be severe, severe bradycardia or even bad, triggering bad heart rhythms from the lower chamber of the heart like ventricular arrhythmia such as ventricular tachycardia. So that would be the most severe consequences of digoxin toxicity but there's even a lot of smaller or more subtle symptoms that can happen when people have elevated uh, digoxin. And over the years there have been several clear associations that the higher your digoxin level, because it, digoxin is something that you can test for, the person's blood level in a blood test, the higher the level, the more adverse reactions and the more worse outcomes are. And unfortunately, recently there have been a couple of studies that have showed that people on digoxin have an increased mortality when they take digoxin for atrial fibrillation. And it's pretty significant, the elevation. Uh, there was one, one study that showed that the mortality rate was over 50% for people who take digoxin when they have a 
blood concentration of over 1.2, which is heading towards the higher, higher end of blood concentrations. So what does that mean? What does that mean for my manage my patients? What that should that mean for a patient who is on a, a, um, digoxin for their atrial fibrillation? First of all, like I can mention it can be a useful medication when used in the right settings, but it has to obviously be very carefully monitored. <clears throat> if you're on digoxin, uh, take as low a dosage as possible and make sure your blood levels are routinely checked. Uh, when it comes to treating patients with digoxin, uh, it can be useful in a short-term setting, but typically if a patient doesn't need it, if they're stable on other medications or they've gotten a procedure, it's one of the first medications that I, I try to stop because of this uh, abnormal data uh, showing adverse events and increased mortality. So if you're on digoxin, please discuss with your doctor if you actually still need this medication. Take as low a dosage as possible. Make sure that your blood levels of digoxin are being monitored because the higher the blood level, that's when the people are at the higher risk for bad outcomes from this medication. But like anything, please always discuss with your doctor which one medications are the right ones for you. Thank you for visiting this video segment for Dr. AFib. I'll see you next time.